All right, what's going on? It's been a while, and uh, obviously this is not live. This is recorded. So as the title of the video says, this is obviously the final thoughts. I've already posted it on Instagram. So essentially the last series of events for the last month, just making sure the door's closed. Uh, obviously during the holidays, father went in for surgery, didn't go well. It was actually really bad. Then he got a little bit better and then, you know, passed away. Kind of sucked. And, you know, I've already written about it a couple of times on Instagram actually told everyone about it and then did the video and obviously read what I'm about to read on Instagram, but it's actually really good for me to take this in. And the reason being is I'm not looking for people to feel sorry for me. This is this has nothing to do with that. But when a moment like this actually happens, when you say, you know, my father's older than other fathers and he's probably not going to live to the age of or the length of the rest of my friend's fathers because they're in their 60s or 70s and my dad's in his 80s. You start saying, you know, I'm prepared. And you are, you know, you are prepared for that day. You know, he started slowing down, but he was still joking around lively in the city two weeks before. And that's essentially where this came from. So essentially, I got the call saying, hey, listen, he's going in for stent surgery, which is they put in stents around your heart and it's supposed to open it up and it's supposed to increase the blood flow and everything like that. And it was supposed to happen just routine. Went to see him and he was drooling. He couldn't get out of bed. He couldn't shake my hand. His eye, one eye was closed, the other one was open. And this was right after surgery. And only a week and a half before was I actually saying, you know, this is great. He looks great. He's running around New York City. We're out to dinner. And then I see him a week and a half later in this state. And I wasn't ready for it. It's that is probably the biggest thing is seeing a guy who still mows the lawn, takes care of the property, puts in and out of the ACs of the windows at home, still does the taxes, still is an active man, you know, still does crosswords, you know, he's still there, he's walking around with his kids, saw me at my two iron, or saw me two out of my four Ironmen of last year races, which was amazing. And then I see him in that state, and then I see him at after the, the next state, which is in a chair, and he can't do anything and that was the impact. And I kept it together there, barely. But when I came back into the city, I just, you know, I broke down. I was like, that's crazy. Like, I was in a fog. I was in a daze and everything else. And I'll start going over a couple of the lessons. And obviously, you know, after this, so I'll read what I wrote. This was written literally right after the first time I saw him come out of surgery. And I came back into the city. So this is what I wrote. What is this all for? Why are we here? What is the meaning? Why is suffering so hard? Is the meaning we put on life everything? I'd love to think that I'm stronger than I am. I'd love to think that Pops will be getting better. I'd love to understand my feeling seeing him in bed unable to move as much as he has been. Seeing the hero decline from 100 to 0. The atrophy, the stillness, the sleepiness and weakness that was felt. That so many millions have felt before to their fallen mother, father, brother, sister and child. It all, it's all tough and confusing. Someone who you miss that was slowing down, is now so weak they can't even eat by themselves, sitting in bed by himself. So tired, he is in need of 24-7 care and assistance. To need help getting in and out of bed, to see the eyes of a proud man on his final weeks. That was the toughest part, seeing, looking at his eyes. His still lively wife, caring, staying overnight by his side, still joking with us about his beard. But what is the lesson? What is the fragility of life? It is just that. We come and we go. We have time to enjoy the show, the ride, journey for hopefully a couple of decades. I will pray and beam you light and prayers tonight. So what's the learning and the turning point?
The lesson is the time we have cannot be spent on miscellaneous BS. It must be put to good use doing meaningful work and having meaningful relationships. It's controlling the stimuli. It's controlling where we put our attention, which is in turn our time. It's taking stock of the future creation we would love to see. It's even going as far, oh, it's reluctantly sometimes moving forward. It's seeing the world how it actually is and not how we want it to be. The reality, the facts. It's creating, visualizing our future. It's understanding the moment to moment is the filter in which we put reality and in which the way we view life, we choose it. So essentially, that really came down to a couple of things, which is, and then on his last day, uh, the feeding tube was taken out. He was on a, and he was completely incapacitated. He was on a breathing um, structure. And seeing him like that, you really understand that he was surrounded by his wife. He was surrounded by his kids. I was holding his hand. I saw his last breath. I saw his pulse stop. My mom was in bed next to him, holding his hand. I was right next to him, holding his hand. And in that moment, you understand a couple of things. Number one is, if for no reason, when decisions on your health need to be made, you need someone that is capable, a spouse, a partner with you, because what we had to decide and what they were giving him, we didn't like at all from the hospital. So for anything else to ensure that his care going beyond here uh, is taken care of because they were making decisions without even asking us. They were they're sending in stuff. And I was like, no, don't. we don't want you to give him that, okay? Increase his memory 10%, but look at the side effects. We were like, no, that's silly. We don't care. His memory's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, so if anything, someone that was caring there to make the decisions for my dad who was not able to make the decisions. The second is, you know, we put so much emphasis on everything. The smallest thing happens and we put all of this emphasis on it. My dad and I, we probably got into crazy fights. We probably didn't talk for maybe weeks on end maybe, you know. I don't remember those times, but holistically, when you look at someone's life and you say, okay, what did this guy do? Are they going to say, because when I told people, hey, listen, by the way, my father passed away, I was not ready for the response. I was not ready for the amount of people that came over, the amount of food that we had, the amount of flowers and donations and everything that was given to us. The wake was packed. The church was packed for his funeral mass. I was completely overwhelmed. I was not expecting that. But this is the thing. He led with action and not with words. And that was one of the biggest takeaways. He led with action. He was disciplined. He was hardworking. He was kind. He was gracious. He was that. He wouldn't say it. He wouldn't always say it. He wouldn't always say, hey, Charles, I love you. But you know what he would do? When I was fucking up, when I was younger, when I was just rolling through school like an asshole, I was not disciplined. I was getting in trouble. I was not bringing in good grades. I had no future. You know what he would look? He would look at me and, and he would ask, hey, how's school? I'd be like, uh, yeah, I don't think you want to see the report card. And you look at me and you just give me the nod of confidence. You just be like, I know you don't know it now, Charles. This is what he was saying through his eyes. I know you don't know it now and you may not learn it in a month or you may not even learn it in a year, but you'll look back and know this is here for a reason. I'm not going to baby you. I'm not going to help you out and I'm not going to yell at you. This, my friend, is the lesson. Me doing what I'm doing and you seeing me doing it. 
In other words, my dad was that, that he demonstrated it. He was the leader, okay? Uh, you know, the person that we looked at was uh, Joseph, who's the father of Jesus. And in the mass, they said, the guy is mentioned only four times. And he has no words spoken, no words in all of the Bible, mentioned only four times. The father of Jesus, mother Mary was mentioned God knows how many times. That was like my dad. He wasn't always mentioned. He wasn't the loudest person in the room. But people would come to me and be like, dude, I remember in baseball, the guy came over and he gave me a little words of advice when I was having a bad season or I was in a slump. Or your dad came and picked me up when he saw me on the side of the road walking home from hockey practice. Or your dad was that person that would just give us that little quip when we needed it, that funny joke. And this isn't about him. This is about... When you are on your last legs, are we going to be talking about, man, that person scrolled through Instagram the most? I got to tell you, this person responded to every post online. Or were we saying, this guy lived up to his expectations. This person felt the fear and did it anyway. This person took advantage of life. He was an amazing father. He was an amazing husband. Which one are we going to be saying? Something that's all talk, that's all online, that doesn't mean anything. Or are we saying, this guy provided for his family. This guy did what was necessary for his family. Which one are we going to say? And that was the biggest lesson. That was the biggest lesson for me, is that I'm putting too much attention on things that I don't need to be putting attention on anything. Because at one time, I just looked at him and I said, this guy can't do anything anymore. This guy can't do, like, he can't even eat by himself. He can't can't even get out of bed by himself. There will be a time that that happens to us. We can't even get out of bed. We can't eat by ourselves, And we're worried about how many likes we're getting on our post. We're worried about someone hanging up on us when we're cold calling. Boo-hoo. How big is your violin? How big's that violin? Sing me a song. You know, there is so much complaining in this world. There are so many excuses to latch on to. There's so many shiny red balls. The person who succeeds is the one that is disciplined, that knows that monotony is part of becoming a master in whatever they want to become a master. Literally on my door right there, 2020, our entire year is dedicated to systems mastery. Systems mastery. What time do I need to go to bed to wake up at a great time to to not complain that I'm too tired, to get out of bed and go to the gym, to then have a great day of making calls. Oh, by the way, what do I say on those calls? How, how often do I follow up? What's my text? What's my email? What do I say? What's my objection handlers? Oh, I'm not looking to list right now. Oh, I'm not actually looking to buy right now. Great, what do you actually say, Charles? Or do you go and you go on your stupid phone you go on this thing, look at that. Oh, there's text messages. It is completely bullshit what they are selling you. They're selling you politics. They're selling you drama. They're selling you to spend your money. They're selling you that. They're not selling better yourself. They're selling rely on us. How about you rely on yourself? You know what we call that? Confidence. I'm relying on my own finances, my own decision-making, my own preferences, not the government, not society, not social media, not anyone else. I will learn through books of people that have done it before me, but I am not learning by force or by someone telling me this is the way it should be done. Because I don't trust that. You're in government. You're in society. Just because you own a business 
and you're trying to sell me on something because you're going to profit doesn't mean I'm going to buy it. And I implore you to be self-reliant because if you are not self-reliant, you are not free. And if you are not free, my friends, you're codependent and you're at the whim of everyone else. If you're not in a good relationship, you're at the whim of that person. You need to leave that relationship. If you don't have good health, you need to get that under control and not take pharmaceutical drugs. Because trust me, based on the entire experience that I had at the hospital with my father, wasn't ideal. Wasn't ideal. I'm not saying they're bad people, but there's a lot of litigious people in society that the doctors say, I'd rather give it a drug than actually tell him the truth, that he needs to move more. Uh, yeah, we need to move him around to get his heart rate going, to get the blood flowing. We don't need to give him a drug to do that, okay? I will also bring in, and this is obviously going to be a little bit longer because it's my feelings on what I went through the last month is that I want people to find me online because of how successful I am offline, not because I'm, fa I'm famous online. I don't want to be famous online. I want to be famous offline. I want to be an amazing person offline. My dad didn't have social media. He had a flip phone. Do you understand how many people came because of one thing he said 20 years ago? I had a guy, I, he, he was my, he was, I was in Boy Scouts in six, when I was 16 years old or 15 years old. That was what, 18 years ago, 19 years ago. And this guy, Will Eads shows up. I heard through who, through who? Then his mom shows up. That, that's who I want to be. I don't want to be the person that's living this, by the way. I also don't want to be a fraud by posting online this amazing life that I have. This amazing journey I'm on. Are you kidding me? I'm waking up with doubts. I'm waking up that this whole thing crumbles tomorrow. We all do. And if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in sales, if you're a business owner, or if you're anyone, you probably have those thoughts eh, maybe once a week, once a month. But if you don't actually tell the public that you're having those thoughts, you're lying to them. You're a fraud. All these people that are fitness stars that I follow because I'm friends with them and they're fitness teachers and they don't talk about their struggles. Be so successful in person by being disciplined, okay? This, this is real talk right now. Okay. It's not always going to be fun. You're always going to be looking for that shiny red ball to put my money here, to do the latest trend, to check out my Instagram feed. How many likes did I get? How many comments? This person messaged me on Facebook messenger. This email came in. I got to respond to it immediately. No, you don't. No, you don't. All right. Well, I'm back. I am completely changed in the best way possible that I am, I, I cannot tell you, I cannot stress how much this book right here has changed my life. And it's, by the way, that, and I know uh, Christopher London mentioned that one as well. Uh, this I listened to on audiobook twice. Uh, it's a tough read, but when you're listening to it, it's much better. It is much better. It is... It is a great, this, by the way, look at, look at the title of that, the secret, the secret, you know, all these people today repackaged it and nothing against them because I wouldn't have known about the secret or anything else if it wasn't for them. So I'm not saying that. I just wish they gave a little bit more credit. You know, you can, you can take this video and in the future, when I'm talking about how great I am, I can assure you, I'm going to say Bob Proctor or Grant Cardone or Gary Vaynerchuk or any or Earl Nightingale, anyone else that came before me because they were the ones that discovered it, not me. I'm just the one talking about it. So you would listen. Okay. So uh, there's so many things 
that I'm going to be talking about on the videos coming up. But I just wanted to give you those last words. I don't need any sympathy or anything else. I just want to let you know that you, you should not care about making the best videos or making the best in Instagram posts if that's not your job. My job is to go out to make calls, to close the business, to list the property, to get it sold. That's my job. And I happen to make content along the way. Content is not the number one thing, okay? Sorry to all those people that think it is. I know from experience when I went all in and I spent thousands of dollars on a content creator, not one piece of business came in because I stopped making calls and I only cared about content creation when in fact I noticed I don't like doing that. I don't like doing that. I don't want to think about it. When, it, when in the future I am successful and I have the money to bring on someone for content, I'll allow them full autonomy. You, you create the content you need to create, okay? For me, I need to make the calls so I can pay your salary, okay? So anyway, if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Have an amazing week. It is Monday and I am, uh, I'm officially back. It's only gonna get better. It changed me for the greatest. He's an amazing man. And this is actually the last thing I'll say on this is that we need good father figures. I know 75% of the people that watch this are men, okay? We need good father figures. Facts. In society today, we need disciplined, good father figures. Hard work. People that lead by example. People that lead, okay? That is necessary in today's world. And to be honest, I'm going to be that person that people say, you know what? Thank you for putting out that message. Thank you because my son who didn't have a father or my daughter who didn't have a father look at you as that example. Because if you don't have a good relationship with a mother or a father, it affects you later in life. Trust me, the studies are out there. It's not good because it hurts in dating. It hurts in relationships, in friendships. If you don't have a good relationship from the beginning, then you are not going to have a good relationship when you go through life. Everything is up to age seven. And if you indoctrinate them with men are bad, or your father sucks, or your mother is an alcoholic, you're going to go through life hating women, or not liking men, or having bad relationships, or having abusive relationships. That unfortunately happens. So... You need that good father figure. And the only way is if other men look at other men as how they interact with society. All right. So have an amazing week. I'll talk.